It is an honor to stand before you as I share some thoughts on a subject of building confidence and staying resilient in the face of adversity. I want to talk to you about how we can cultivate these qualities within ourselves to not only survive, but thrive in a world full of challenges and setbacks. First and foremost, confidence is the foundation upon which success is built. It is the unwavering belief in our abilities and the knowledge that we can overcome any obstacle that comes our way. Confidence is not something we're born with. It is something we develop through our experiences and mindset. We must learn to trust ourselves and our abilities, acknowledging that failures and setbacks are merely stepping stones on the path to success. The key to building confidence lies in taking action. Each step forward, no matter how small, reinforces our belief in ourselves. Remember, it is better to stumble forward than to stand still. Take risks, pursue your passions, and embrace challenges as opportunities for growth. By doing so, you will gain valuable experience and prove to yourself that you have what it takes to navigate the toughest of circumstances. However, it is important to recognize that adversity is an inevitable part of life. No matter how confident we are, we will face setbacks and obstacles along our journey. The true measure of our character lies in our ability to stay resilient in the face of adversity. Resilience is the power to bounce back stronger, wiser, and more determined than before. When faced with adversity, remember that it is not what happens to us that defines us, but how we respond to it. Embrace a positive attitude and refuse to be defined by temporary setbacks. Use these challenges as opportunities for growth and self-improvement. Remember, the darkest times often lead to the greatest breakthroughs. One of the most powerful ways to cultivate resilience is through the power of perspective. Train your mind to see setbacks as temporary and surmountable. Develop the habit of asking yourself, what can I learn from this experience? Focus on the lessons rather than dwelling on the failures. By doing so, you will develop the mental fortitude to overcome any obstacle that comes your way. Surround yourself with positive influences, people who inspire and uplift you. Seek out mentors and role models who have faced adversity and emerged stronger. Remember, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose your company wisely. In addition to the external influences, take care of your inner world, practice self-care, invest in personal growth, and nurture your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Understand that building confidence and resilience is a lifelong journey. It requires consistent effort, dedication, and a willingness to embrace discomfort. Just like physical exercise, the more you challenge yourself, the stronger you become. Set goals that push you out of your comfort zone and celebrate every step forward, no matter how small. Figure out what you're going to do. Say to yourself, I am going to detach. I am going to assess the situation. I am going to come up with a plan and I am going to execute. And then start moving. It's, it's not going to be a perfect plan, but take action. Action that moved you in a positive direction. And if it ends up being the wrong direction, that's fine. At least you've learned where not to go. Learn how to handle the winters. That's obvious. The winters come right after falls. And pray tell how often. Every year, according to written history, for the last six and a half thousand to cross your fingers and say, I hope, I hope, I hope it doesn't come. I'm telling you, we call that naive. Now there's all kinds of winters. 
not just the winter of the season, but there's all kinds of winters. Winter time, the down time, the discouraging time. One writer called it the winter of discontent. The winter when you can't figure it out, the winter when it all goes wrong. Economic winter, social winters, political winters, and personal winters. When your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces, the nights are unusually long. It's called winter time. Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to be's don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor till we sweep them away. You don't sing me love songs. You don't say you need me. And you don't bring me flowers anymore. A song of winter. But hey, we're acquainted with all those winter scenarios. We've been through them all. Now the question is, what do you do about the winters? Well, you can't get rid of January by tearing it off the calendar. But here's what you can do with the upcoming winters of your life. The long ones, the short ones, the easy ones, the more difficult ones. Here's what you can do. Get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of good words. Wiser, stronger, and better to challenge for yourself the upcoming winters of your life. Don't you think you could read more? Pick up the scenario, pick up the books, pick up the cassettes. So I can put some stuff on cassettes so you can listen to it, put it in books so you can read it. Now putting it on video so you can see it. I'm telling you, anybody that wants to can get wiser. Next is stronger. Anybody can get stronger. If you're willing to do the push-ups, you can get stronger. If you're willing to put yourself through the paces, you can get stronger. Can you develop stronger skills? And the answer is yes. Start practicing, practicing, practicing. And you can get stronger. Can you get stronger in handling life situations? Of course. But you gotta go to work on yourself. You can't blame out there wishing it was easier. Wish you were stronger. And here's the last one, get better. Anybody can get better. Language, we can all get better. I've been lecturing now for 33 years and I'm telling you, today versus 33 years ago, I'm better. First time I gave a talk, I stood up, my mind sat back down. I mean, you know, I've been through that whole deal. Open my mouth, nothing came out for a while. My knees are banging together, the sweat's pouring off my face, I'm shaking like a leaf. It's called terror, in case you haven't tried it, those first attempts. But I'm telling you, I got through it, and I did it again, and I got through it, and I did it again, and I got through it. And now, of course, I can lecture for a few hours in one day. Anybody can get better, develop the skills, okay? Handle the upcoming winters. Don't wish away the winters, that's called naive. Wish for the skills, wish for the strength, wish for the wisdom. Winter represents the harshest periods of our lives. It is when we face adversity, loss, and unexpected trials. But let me tell you, surviving the winters of life is not just about enduring. It is about thriving and emerging stronger on the other side. The first lesson we can learn from winter is to embrace the season. Just as winter has its unique beauty, the storms of life can teach us invaluable lessons. It is during these times that we discover our inner strength and resilience. Instead of resisting or resenting the challenges, embrace them as opportunities for growth and self-discovery. In the depths of winter, it is important to remember that Spring always follows. The harshness of the season is temporary, and so are the challenges we face in life. It is in these difficult times that we must hold on to hope, knowing that brighter days are ahead. Have faith that the sun will shine again and trust that you have the strength to weather the storm. Surviving the winters of life also requires adaptability. Just as nature adapts to the changing seasons, we must be willing to adapt our mindset and approach to challenges. Life is unpredictable, and sometimes our plans and expectations are disrupted. Instead of resisting the change, be flexible and open to new possibilities. Adaptability allows us to find alternative paths and seize opportunities that we may have otherwise overlooked. Another crucial aspect of surviving the winters of life is cultivating a support system just as trees in a winter forest stand stronger when they grow together, we too are stronger when we have a network of supportive and caring individuals around us. 
Surround yourself with people who uplift you, inspire you, and believe in your potential. Lean on them during tough times and offer your support in return. Together, we can weather any storm. During the winters of life, self-care becomes paramount. Take time to nurture your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Engage in activities that bring you joy and replenish your spirit. Practice self-compassion and be kind to yourself. Remember, you cannot pour from an empty cup, so prioritize your own well-being as you navigate through difficult times. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. Happiness is not an accident. It is first a study and then a practice. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Would you like to guess how many people make wealth a study? Right, very few. Surely, since wealth and happiness and success are all values to cultivate, you would naturally assume that most people would make a careful study of them. Why they do not is yet another example of those aspects of life that fall into the category of mysteries of the mind. Remember, major keys to your better future are going to be ideas and information. If we have any lack, it is not because we lack money or opportunity or resources. It is because we lack ideas that have taken form from information. Many years ago, I learned that some of the best advice ever given comes from the Bible. There's a phrase in that amazing book that says, if you search, you will find. So that is the way to discover ideas and life-changing information. Search. In order to find, you must search. You must go to the seminars and to the training classes. You must listen to the cassette programs that can give you breakthrough ideas. You must go and engage in conversations with people of substance. You must go looking, go searching. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. And as you make a diligent search, you will find just the ideas you need. Now, here is the next key word in the process of seeking information that can change your life. And that word is capture. When you find a good idea, capture it. Don't trust your memory. Capture everything, write it down, record it. This is one of the reasons why we have put this program on cassette tapes, to capture the ideas. As a serious student of wealth and happiness, I would encourage you to make use of a journal as a gathering place for all the ideas that come your way. I consider personal journals to be one of the three treasures a wise person will leave behind. Here are those three treasures. One is your photographs. Take a lot of pictures. Being able to capture the event in a fraction of a second is a phenomenon of the 20th century and how easy it is to take phenomena for granted. I've gone to Taiwan to lecture three times in the last three years. On my last trip, there were about a thousand people in attendance for a weekend seminar. Now, if there were 1,000 people in the room, guess how many cameras were also in the room? Right, 1,000. Everyone brings a camera to capture all the events and the people, new friends, new experiences. I spend a big part of my time having my picture taken with everyone. Have you ever looked at the pictures a couple of generations back? Unfortunately, there are only a handful. But wouldn't it be great if there were hundreds of pictures to tell the whole story? So make sure you leave behind your whole story in your treasure of pictures. The next treasure to leave behind is your library. All the books you have chosen. Books well read, well underlined, with notes and observations and reflections you have written in the margins. The books that have helped shape your philosophy and the values of your life. That is a treasure, your library. And your listening library too. All these terrific cassettes. They are a treasure. The third treasure to leave behind is perhaps the most important. And that is your journals, containing all the ideas you have captured in your lifetime. Business ideas, social ideas, culture ideas, investment ideas, lifestyle ideas. Can you imagine the value these journals would have? They will certainly be more valuable to leave behind to your children than your couch. So get serious about your search for information and ideas. 
and about leaving that information behind for future generations. Here's the next key word for expanding your life for the better. That word is review. Go back over all your life experiences. Learn a skill called reflection, pondering life's events with the intent of learning. That is so important. I call it running the tapes again. The events of your life are some of the best sources of information. Don't merely go through your days, get from your days. Be aware of what's going on around you so that you will drive the grooves in the record of that day deep into your consciousness. Here are some good times to reflect. First at the end of the day, take a few minutes and go back over your day. Where you went and what you did and what you said, what worked and what didn't. What do you want to do again? What do you want to correct? The colors, the sights, the sounds, the conversations, the experiences. You see, experience can become commodity, currency, coin, an incredible source of value. But only if you take time to reflect on the experience and turn it into something of value. As we mentioned in our first fundamental, it's not what happens that makes the difference in how your life works out but rather what you do about what happens. And part of doing something about what happens is this process of reflection, studying an event in order to glean valuable information from it. Another time to reflect is at the end of the week. Take a few hours. Take a half a day at the end of the month. Take a weekend at the end of the year. Reason? To make the past more valuable. Sophisticated people have learned how to gather up the past and invest it in the future. When my father was about to celebrate his 76th birthday, I said to him, Father, can you imagine what it's going to be like to gather up the last 75 years and invest them in your 76th? That's how life can become productive and exciting. Not just living one more year, but gathering up the years and investing them in the next one. By reflecting, you can gather up all the conversations you have ever had and invest all that you have learned and all that you have felt in the next conversation. Gather all your experiences and invest all that you have learned and felt in your next experience. And the more value, the more substance, the more information, the more wisdom you can gather from all of your yesterdays, the more exciting your future becomes. Probably all of us already know all that we need to know in order to make our lives turn out the way we want, except for one thing, how to gather what we've learned in order to invest it in what we want to become. So start a new discipline that can lead to wealth and happiness. Find out how things work. Never let it be said you didn't find out. Now let me give you a qualifying phrase. You may not be able to do all you find out, but make sure you find out all you can do. So make your own life one of your most important studies. And in studying your own life, be sure to study the negative as well as the positive your failures as well as your successes. Our so-called failures serve us well when they teach us valuable information. They're frequently better teachers than our successes. One of the ways we learn how to do something right is simply by doing it wrong. Doing it wrong is a great school for learning. Now I would suggest that you not take too long. If you've done it wrong for 10 years, I wouldn't suggest another 10. But what a close at hand and emotionally impactful way to learn from your own experiences. When I met Mr. Schoff, I had been working six years. I started when I was 19 and when I met him, I was 25. He said to me, Mr. Rohn, you have been working now for six years. How are you doing? I said, not very well. He said, then I suggest you not do that anymore. Six years is long enough to operate the wrong plan. Next he asked, how much money have you saved in the last six years? I said, not any. He said, who sold you on that plan six years ago? What a fantastic question. Where did I get my present plan that wasn't working well? Hey, everyone has bought someone's plan. The question is, whose? Whose plan have you bought? Now, those initial confrontations as you come to grips with your own past experiences may be a little painful at first especially if you have made as many errors as I did. But think of the progress you can make when you have finally confronted those errors by becoming a better student of your own life. Now, the next way to learn is from other people's experiences. 
And remember, you can learn from other people whether they have done it right or wrong. You can learn from negative as well as positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories on both sides of the ledger. One list of human stories is called examples, do what these people did. And the other list of human stories is called warnings, don't do what these clods did. What a wealth of information, what to do and what not to do. I think it also means, however, that if your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. There are three ways to learn from other people. The first is to listen to the cassettes and read the books by and about people who've accomplished great things. All the successful people I know and work with around the world are good readers. They just read, read, read. They are so curious that they are driven to read because they just have to know. It is one of the things they all have in common. Here's a good phrase. All leaders are readers. And they use cassette programs too, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Cassettes can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and new skills. Did you know there are cassettes and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop personality, get rich, develop influence, become sophisticated, and people don't use them? How would you explain that? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and told how they did it on cassettes like this and people don't want to listen? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. He says, well, yeah, if you worked where I work, by the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV and get to bed. You can't stay up half the night and read, read, read. And this is the guy that's behind on his bills. He's a good worker, hard worker, sincere. But remember, you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broke, confused and embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader, a good listener. At least you could hear a good cassette on the way home, right? Now, you don't have to read or listen to educational cassettes half the night. Although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. But here is all I ask, just 30 minutes a day. That's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. Half rich isn't bad. 30 minutes. Hear or read something challenging, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day. And here's the next key. Every day. Don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. Hey, you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a Bible phrase that says, humans cannot live on bread alone, or food alone. It says, the next most important thing to bread is words. Words nourish the mind, words nourish the soul. Humans have to have food and words to be healthy and prosperous. Make sure you have a good diet of words every day. I told my staff one day, some people read so little, they have rickets of the mind. And also remember, to properly feed the mind, you must have good balance. Don't just read or listen to the easy stuff. You can't live on mental candy. Here is a thought. Why not call good books and cassettes tapping the treasure of ideas? That's it. Tapping the treasure of ideas, like you're doing with this program. And if somebody's got a good excuse for not tapping the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day, or spending the money and getting the books and cassettes, I'd like to hear it. Some excuses you wouldn't believe. I say, John, I've got this gold mine. I've got so much gold, I don't know what to do with it all. Come on over and dig. John says, I don't have a shovel. I say, will John get you one? He says, do you know what they want for shovels? Hey, invest the money. Get the cassettes and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future. Mr. Shelf got me started on my library when I first met him. He said to me, become self-educated. Standard education will get you standard results. Check those numbers and see if that's what you want. And if it isn't, if you want something better than standard, you must become self-educated. So I went to work on my library, and I now have one of the best.